Welcome to TM Broadcasting. We are coming to you live from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Frank Allen. Today's date, 5-13 in the year of our Lord, 2022. Tonight, Sasha Suter and I have the great pleasure of interviewing Mark Williams and Stephen Marvin, both from Targeted UK. If you would like to listen, dial plus one five one eight eight zero one one three one eight. If you have a question, dial plus one. Six one seven nine eight seven eight six zero three. Okay, Sasha, over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, fellow citizens. How are you all? Uh, we at the Allen Institute and um, Targeted Massachusetts care about everybody so much. We care about the future. So what we're trying to do is share information with you through the Targeted Massachusetts website every Sunday. And we're holding these radio shows, interviewing whistleblowers and people that have been inside this messed up uh, program that thousands and thousands of people are experiencing. And many more people are being, unfortunately, brought into the same horror. So we here are dedicated to sharing information and supporting the world, our communities, and anybody that needs understanding. Therefore, we need you to donate. If you can donate something, it would be so beneficial. So you can donate at the Allen Institute for Human Rights. We are a non-profit providing essential support and information relating to the abuse of advanced technology upon innocent civilians all over the world, 24-7. Make no mistake. So please support us, as I said before, with whatever you can. Um, uh, you can pay at... Um, oh, my goodness me. I haven't got my back up with my plan. You can find us at the Allen Institute. Um, and the PayPal link comes up immediately. Frank, I'm going to have to go back over to you so that I get the PO box because I've um, misplaced it in my papers there. Okay. We have Mark Williams with us so far. Stephen Marvin is having some audio difficulties, and we expect him back at any time. But, Mark, I would like you to... Bless this show with your prayer, if you would. I can't think of a better time for you to do it. Oh, well, thank you, Frank. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Um, And, um, yeah, I'd be very happy to do that. So shall we start with the prayer then? Yes, sir. Uh, And if you'd like, you can once again close with the prayer. That's entirely up to you, but it's so good. Well, thank you. Thank, I thank think you very much. People should hear it. Go ahead, sir. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll read it through um, once. No, I'll read it through twice to begin with, and then once at the end. So that's the oh, 20 I, minutes that I, I recommend. I, I, I actually think that that's too long, Mark, uh, for, for, for the sake of, of this I mean, forget, forgive me, if, uh, Frankie, if you, uh, but I, maybe you would just say the prayer once and, and say that we're going to do it together at the end, it's just as an introduction to it, so we can talk to you and get people to be with us. Um, it's just an idea, just to galvanise things. Um, okay, so, I mean, it takes about seven minutes, six to seven minutes to do it once. So I'll do it once now, and then do you want it at the end or not, sorry? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll do it once oh, at the yeah. beginning, once at the end. That's about 13 minutes. That's not too bad, is it? I think that's a, no, probably that's about fine. a pretty amount of time. That's, that's fine. That's great. Okay, all right. Well, 
Um, for those of us who've not seen the prayer, I just want to give a bit of a premise to the prayer and to let people know that no matter what your beliefs are, that this prayer is for everyone because it doesn't matter how we view this prayer. You know, we can view it as just an affirmation or a script. You know, no matter how we look at it, whether we're spiritual or religious or whether we just want to look at it more from a sort of personal development or psychological point of view, you know, like in psychology and personal development, they talk about programming the mind, this kind of thing. Um, then it still works. It's just we can choose to look at it in whichever way works for us. We don't have to be spiritual or religious to to do this. That's the first thing I would like to say is that I would like to encourage people to do what works. And as my in my experience, this is what we are missing in the community. We're, we're taking lots of action, but we need to use our mind and our emotions to empower our action and also to attract and manifest our freedom in the quickest possible time. So that said, please really focus on this prayer with 100% of your concentration. And when you're, uh, when I'm reading the prayer, the best thing to do is to feel it as if it's already true. So imagine if this had already manifested, how would you be seeing that in your own mind? What would you be saying to yourself? How would you be feeling? Really sort of try and capture that feeling as if you're already free now, you know, that sort of feeling of relief, that kind of feeling of, of maybe joy or um, whatever that, that feeling may be for you personally, then that is the feeling you want to create as if this is already manifested. And the words are actually written in a way um, that suggest and paint that picture in everyone's mind that the prayer is already manifested. So, um, yeah, all people really need to do is just visualize and intend and hold this in their mind and their emotions as I read it through. Thank you, Mark. Beautiful. All targeted individuals have been recognized globally and freed from the crimes against humanity which affected them. This happened from the top down globally in the quickest, most efficient way for all affected. Targeted individuals globally are now all freed from directed energy weapon assaults, electronic torture, mind control technology assaults, chemical biological assaults, and multi-person stalking. All forms of mind control and frequency quantum or AI weapon assaults on planet Earth, whether mass or individual, have been completely stopped, regardless of the source of them. We live in a world free from mind control. Targeted individuals have been helped by the UN, governments globally, and the military and intelligence agencies globally as part of a takedown operation of these crimes. And they continue to offer their assistance ongoing in the most helpful and effective ways. The global press played a huge role in exposing targeted individuals' crimes ultimately. They revealed to the public that this is happening globally to civilians and not just US diplomats. As part of the takedown operation globally, targeted individuals were, and still are, helped by human rights groups, the police, the Council of Europe, the EU, UK Parliament, and parliaments globally, the US Senators, the US Senate Intelligence Committee, the White House, and many other groups globally who all got on board to help. The ICATOR lawsuit and the international email campaign were also incredibly successful and influential in the best way in helping to stop these crimes. This means this problem has now been eliminated completely. Target individuals globally are now protected and healed through official testing programs, radiation measurement centers, tracking centers, jamming equipment, shielding rooms, 
radiation police, and a whole host of other one-to-one -one therapies and other protective or healing measures. Targeted individuals are now treated with compassion and understanding by people globally, and the measures and safeguards have been put in place to ensure that citizens globally will always remain free from these remote threats. This includes appropriate safeguards on artificial intelligence, both generally and for the use of this technology. The technology is now publicly illegal globally, as worldwide legislation has now come into place by governments globally as the norm. Targeted individuals are now so happy, loving, joyful, peaceful, safe, secure, connected, successful, and much, much more. They have wonderful relationships with friends and family and wonderful free lives. They have been helped in a realistic way to receive compensation for the psychological damage, trauma, and physical damages they received during their targeting. The appropriate justice has now happened with regards to those who committed these crimes globally, who have received the appropriate justice from legal systems globally. They have been used as a severe example to ensure that we always remain free from these crimes. We as humanity are now in a much better place. Now all target individuals have been freed globally. Justice has been served. Peace reigns in the world. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, universe. And so it is. Many thousands joined the prayer campaign and prayed three times daily for 20 minutes at the set times to finally end these crimes globally. Many thousands of people globally also prayed on this prayer for very long periods, as much as they could, and whenever they could, i.e. one, two, three hours. Many thousands even prayed continuously for many full days, weeks, and months until freedom was achieved. We achieved 20,000 people praying daily on this prayer in an incredibly quick amount of time after it went viral in the truth community, media, and general public. Many thousands joined the prayer campaign and prayed three times daily for 20 minutes at the set times to finally end these crimes globally. Many thousands of people globally also prayed on this prayer for very long periods, as much as they could and whenever they could, i.e. one, two, three hours, etc. Many thousands even prayed continuously for many full days, weeks and months until freedom was achieved. We achieved 20,000 people praying daily on this prayer in an incredibly quick amount of time after it went viral in the truth community, media, and general public. Many thousands joined the prayer campaign and prayed three times daily for 20 minutes at the set times to finally end these crimes globally. Many thousands of people globally also prayed on this, this for very long periods, as much as they could and whenever they could, i.e. one, two, three hours. Many thousands even prayed continuously for many full days, weeks, and months until freedom was achieved. We achieved 20,000 people praying daily on this prayer in an incredibly quick amount of time after it went viral in the truth community, media, and general public. This prayer has now manifested in the way described above or a way that is even better and faster, and so it is. This prayer has now manifested in the way described above, or a way that is even better and faster, and so it is. This prayer has now manifested in the way described above, or a way that is even better and faster, and so it is. End of prayer. Beautiful, Mark. Just beautiful. Wonderful, Mark. Yeah. Thank you so much for that gift. No, I really appreciate you you saying. I really appreciate you having me on the show to, yeah. to share this because mm -hmm. I really do believe this is the key. You know, I see, you know, a lot of people taking action in the community and 
action that is not backed up with a, a, a powerful and a positive mindset and mm-hmm. a positive and powerful emotional base mm-hmm. is only a fraction of its potential power. Yeah. It's only a fraction of its ability to actually manifest if we're all able to focus on this prayer, you know, and say this prayer and, and generally just focus on our freedom and, you know, hold that feeling of freedom in our mind, hold them feeling, hold them thoughts of freedom in our mind. If we're all able to do that in the community, you know, I can absolutely guarantee you that we will achieve our freedom in a massively quicker amount of time, you know, potentially even, you know, anywhere from three to five, six times quicker if we were able to do this collectively as a community. I'm not even exaggerating on this. Mm-hmm. It really is that powerful. Um, and I would also just like to say as well that the reason that I've put such a high target in, you know, I said about 20,000 people praying daily was because I learned very young when I really got into personal development that the higher we hold our standards and the higher we aim for, the more we get. So I don't know whether you've ever heard that phrase, shoot for the stars and land on the moon. <laughs> what this means is that when we hold our standards really high and we aim for like the highest amount that is conceivably possible, even something that is beyond maybe what we could currently conceive, that by simply raising our standards and asking for more from the universe, asking from that, from creation, then we will achieve so much more simply by asking for that and putting that out there than we would say if we were to ask for 1,000 people, you know? Um, So I always like this adage of shoot for the stars, land on the moon. And that means that even if we didn't get to 20,000 and we only achieved, you know, say 5,000 people praying daily, that would still be better than if we'd asked for 1,000 and only maybe achieved 200 people praying. Mm -hmm. This is, this is why I've raised the bar that high and I've raised it to that, that specific amount. Um, and another thing is that we, we can achieve that amount. You know, we only have to conceive this in our own mind. And whatever we can conceive in our mind, we can achieve on the outside because the external reality is literally a, refle- a reflection of our thoughts internally. You know, whatever we hold in our mind and our emotions internally has to reflect by the law of attraction in the outside world. So it literally is the case that when you hold that in your mind, that is already that has already been achieved on the energetic level, on the esoteric level. And it just needs to come into physical manifestation. So we really need to remember that. Remember that when we know it is done, when we feel it and when we see it is done, that has already been achieved on the energetic level. And all we need to do now is just allow it into existence. Keep holding that feeling of freedom. Keep saying the prayer. Keep holding these thoughts of freedom in our mind as if it's already been achieved. And that will quickly come into our reality. So we need to believe, you know, we need to feel it as being true, but, you know, we need to believe. And belief is a very important factor of manifestation. So another thing is that when we set a specific goal, it's much more likely to come true. So instead of just saying, I could have just said, you know, um, we get a lot of people joining the prayer campaign. But the universe, or God, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, all that is, um, does not know the difference between a lot of people. And, you know, a lot of people, for example, if you're saying that to the universe, could mean, it could mean 10 people, it could mean 100, it could mean 1,000. So the universe doesn't really know. That's very vague, which is why I've put a specific amount in there so that we can actually manifest a specific amount and that our minds will actually bring that cause, you know, that cause into reality and actually plant that to, that seed to actually manifest. So that's all I really wanted just to say about the actual prayer that I've just read. Okay, Mark, I think you should call that Mark's prophecy or prophecy yeah. of Mark. Because I think that is fantastic. That is really beautiful. Yeah. 
I'd yeah. like a copy to uh, post on our website. And Brilliant. Yeah, I'll share a, um, a link in the chat um, box. Um, I've also got a, um, a new link, which has got all of the prayers that I've now created as well. So I've actually created a personal empowerment prayer for TIs as well. So the main prayer is the prayer for the prayer campaign, which I've just read. And that's the main one that I would like people to focus on. That's basically, you know, to ensure collective global freedom and to really help generate the energy for that. Um, but the personal um, empowerment prayer is for TIs who are either going through a difficult time and really need to change their mindset to a more empowered mindset or and or TIs who just want to empower themselves to the absolute maximum. So I'll share that document with you as well um, because that includes that personal empowerment prayer. And I think if people are saying both of these prayers together, you know, saying the the prayer for the prayer campaign, you know, the main one, and also using the TI empowerment prayer to help them become an empowered activist and to become the most empowered version of themselves, then, you know, we will be unstoppable. Like if everyone was to say these prayers, my God, the whole community, you know, it would be absolutely incredible what we, what we could achieve and how we could work together. Um, so I'll share that as well with you. Um, so I really appreciate your, your interest in, in being able to share this. It's, um, um, I'm just absolutely over the moon with the amount of positive response I've had from, you know, organizations like yourself and PACs and Citizens Against Harmful Technology. It's, um, it's really, really positive, and uh, I'm just I'm so grateful, honestly. So, Well, once again, thank you very much for sharing that. Um, number two, a prayer like that and your faith, will unite everyone. And this is one of our biggest goals. This will unite people. Thank, that, that, thank you. I mean, that is the hope. That is the hope. I'm hoping that this, that, you know, there's a lot of, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of lack of hope out there. And I'm hoping that this gives a shared vision and, a shared glimpse into what freedom is like and the specific steps that need to happen in order for that to materialize. Because the prayer is written in a very specific way that outlines all of the key points to really paint that picture in people's mind. So I'm really hoping that that shared vision is something that gives people hope and I know, like, from some of the feedback I've had already is that some people have, have come to me and said that, you know, that they've actually started feeling a lot better in themselves. Like, all of a sudden, they've got a sense of hope after saying the prayer. Um, and, you know, they believe that this is possible. They believe this is going to happen. So I'm, I'm really, really encouraging all people, no matter what your beliefs are, you know, no matter who you are, to really you know, really commit to this and, and prioritize and, 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 and join this campaign because it's it's really going to work if we all get on board and we all help and we all take that personal initiative to get involved and to help. Mark, do you think you could say that prayer on the conference call as well? I know it's, that's it's, getting pretty it's late. Gonna work. We all get on board and we all help. And Sorry, I'll take that personal Yeah, yeah I, I, I do. Yeah, I can say that. Are you still there? Mark. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You're still there, right. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'd be absolutely very happy to say that on, on the, um, the conference call as well. It'd be my absolute pleasure. Yes, I feel very, very bad right now that um, we couldn't get Stephen straightened out uh, because he is still has not appeared. And No, I know. Yeah, Um yeah, that's a, that's a real shame. Um, yeah, it's a shame. Um, I don't know what the, the issue was, but um, yeah. 
Um, Stephen's a great guy and he's been helping me. He's been helping me a lot. Um, he's been an ambassador for the forum. He's been sharing a lot of the material and the campaigns. And he's also been working on the forum to help moderate it. And just an all-around great guy, you know, so it's a pleasure to work with him. And, um, um, yeah, so it's a real shame, you know, Stephen can join us this evening. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, been a, a great supporter of Targeted Massachusetts for years, he and his sister. And... I just, uh, words can't express. He, um, everyone that I meet in this targeted program are all wonderful people, without exception. And I met Sasha, and we have a lot of the same views and opinions on many things. And so we became a team here. So in this brings people together to fight against this thing. After all, this is a war, and I would say offhand it is a spiritual war at the hands of men and women. And I think... Uh, I, I, yeah. Sorry, go on, go on, Frank. And I think the targets, I'm not going to say we were chosen, but I cannot say that we haven't been chosen. To mm, wage yeah. war and bring light to the world as to these travesties that are being performed on innocent men, women, children alike. When you hear about a four-year-old who is coming down the stairs and he says, Mommy, they won't leave me alone. And, I mean, it just tore me up when I heard that. And um, that was an activist's little boy. Um, that's horrible. This is that that this is this is one of the things you know that I think is really going to help eventually when this will get this will get exposed. You know, and I think this is one of the things that's really going to you know sink sink home to people is that when they know it's happening to children and they realise the risk, you know, they realise that any one of their loved ones and their friends and family could be put in this program. And that really becomes clear to them. I think that that will actually tip people over the edge. And I also think that, you know, what you're saying is 100% true, you know, in terms of that this is a spiritual war. And, you know, even though people say this is a technological thing and, you know, that, that it's only technology, there is another aspect behind all of this and behind what is going on. And, the way that I've tried to um, explain it, just to give a brief overview, is to say that, you know, if, if quantum physicists have proved that everything is energy in the universe, you know, that we are energy, that our mind is energy, our mind is energy, our emotions are energy, our souls are energy, and everything around us is energy, all we can see and all we can touch is energy, and they prove that everything is effectively one big interconnected quantum soup of energy and it's all connected. And so, you know, this includes our thoughts as well. And this is why the law of attraction is really the key because what's happened is that the people who've done this to us have such, have had, have had such an energetic advantage Firstly, because of the use and the sophistication of this technology, but also because they've had us in such a bind for so long that um, they have such, they've accumulated so much more energy through their minds and their emotions, probably because they're so used to getting away with it and they have an arrogance. They have a real belief and a real faith that, you know, these guys, you know, they're, they're not going to, 
they're not going to be able to fight back. And the analogy I like to use is that if everything is energy, including our thoughts, and if our thoughts manifest our reality via the law of attraction, you know, as a reflection of our thoughts, then all we need to do is accumulate so much energy collectively by praying, you know, on this prayer and praying generally for our freedom as well, that if we accumulate collectively, if we generate more energy of freedom than their energy of oppression, then that's when things will start to manifest incredibly quickly. And, you know, people will be shocked just how quickly things will manifest. So that ties into this whole idea of being a spiritual war. It'd be an energetic war. You know, that's effectively the same thing, spiritual, energetic, you know, it's the same thing. So, um, and I can also kind of relate to what you're saying about, you know, that we've been chosen, you know, there are no coincidences in the universe, you know, and, you know, we have been chosen, I believe on some level, um, either through some karma or, some other reason to represent this fight. So, you know, we, I, I, I firmly believe that the universe or God only gives people what they can deal with or accomplish in any given moment. And so this is something that's really kept me going, you know, when I've, when I've been going through challenging times is just to kind of remember that, that, And I do believe this to be true because I've seen this in that whatever anyone may be experiencing, you know, the universe will never give you more than what you can actually handle, you know? And I know sometimes we do go through challenging periods, but I think so long as we keep this in mind and so long as we live in the moment and we realize that this moment is all there is right now, and so long as I stay present in this moment and get through this moment, that's good enough. I just keep having to get through to the next moment and then to the next moment and then to the next moment by staying in the moment and realizing that if I stay in this moment, I can cope. As soon as I start thinking, you know, too much into the future or the past and my mind starts to wander and I come out of the moment, that's when we start to suffer. That's when TI start to suffer is when they start to lose the moment and, start to go into overwhelm and, and, and what if, and, and, you know, all of the, the, the events of the past, we need to realize that we you know we'll never be given in, you know, and I firmly believe so we'll never be given any more than what we can deal with. And also that if we stay in every single moment and only deal with the current moment that is right in front of us, then we can cope and we can be strong. And that's my firm belief. You know, and I've, I've seen, exper- I've experienced this and seen this to verify this a lot, though. So. Okay, I just wanted to let you know that Stephen is with us, but he has the same problem that he had, I think. He is muted on his end at this point in time. But to get back to what you were speaking of, he seems to have unmuted now. His oh. uh, his mute sign is not on anymore. Okay. Stephen, do you want to speak? I guess he can. That's too bad because he's got a lot to offer, and uh, I was really hoping for that. But we have to look at this as an invisible war. If you look all the way back, all the way back to the Crusades, it's all been a spiritual war in one way or another. And in this particular instance, it's still against men. But mm, absolutely. Let the cross go before us. Absolutely. I hundred percent agree. And we have oh go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. No, sorry, I was I was just saying that I hundred percent agree with what you're saying. Sorry, please continue. Um We have um, many TIs 
most TIs, or should I say all TIs, they're targeted in, in one way or another and tortured in the night, tortured in the day. They have V2K all the hours they're awake. And that's one thing that I have. And it's, it's horrible. Continual comments, defaming comments against you all day long. You know how it goes. There Absolutely. Are- yeah, it, 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 it's really just despicable to think that... I still have to pinch myself sometimes to think that there are actually people who, you know, they may not be observing it 24-7, but basically who are operating these and they know and see and experience what you go through and yet they still seemingly have no compassion. And, you know, it's it's beyond belief, really. You know, it's, you know, I I just can't fathom it. I, I honestly just can't fathom it and... I think it's you a know, pre- prerequisite to have no faith, to have no compassion, to have nothing for the human race. He who picks on his own species will fall. Oh, absolutely. That's frowned it, upon. Karma is a funny thing. And these people will get will get back what they put out there. Yes, they will. Because the universe or God, however however you want to look at it, always operates by a perfect exchange system. So every single bit of negative energy or negative action or negative thoughts and emotions that they put their put our way, every single use of that technology, they will receive back energetically in exactly the same quantities. You know, it may not happen today or next week, but it will come back. And I think that's something that people need to realize is that it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. And this is getting exposed. And I firmly believe that this can happen in a lot shorter time than what people realize. But I will state again because personal empowerment is the absolute key. If we can help people to become as empowered as possible in the TI community, it all starts with us as conscious creators and as conscious manifestors. And if we can empower ourselves to the best version of ourselves by learning the tools and techniques that work, and one of the main ones being the law of attraction, we can manifest anything in a, a quick amount of time and we can also work together as a team in the, in the best possible way. And I think this has been the problem is that, you know, as a community, we've not been able to work as an, a team as efficiently or as effectively as perhaps we're capable of or we would have liked. And I just really want to emphasize this point of personal empowerment and people taking the time to invest in personal empowerment and improving themselves and spending maybe an hour a day every day trying learning about how to improve themselves and become a more empowered version of themselves and practicing it during the day. You know, maybe in the initial phases, maybe even, you know, sitting down and listening to audio programs two, three, four hours, or even, you know, um, even more if you're feeling, you know, that motivated. I've put some, um, as part of Targeted UK, which is the website, it's the premier website for targeted UK, targeted individuals in the UK. I have nine campaigns, and one of them is called the Learn the Law of Attraction campaign, which goes hand in hand with the prayer campaign, because, you know, whether we call it prayer or affirmation of the law of attraction, it's effectively the same thing. It's just different names that we're calling it. And so to be more precise, when we pray, we are activating the law of attraction. We are using that law of the universe, which is just as predictable 
and reliable as the law of gravity or any other, other than natural laws, the universal laws, we are using that law of attraction when we pray. We are activating that law of attraction when we pray. And so if we um, do that, that's why I'm trying to promote these two campaigns side by side, you know, the prayer campaign, but I'm also trying to educate the TI community about why that works. And the reason why the prayer campaign works is because it uses this law of attraction. It activates this law of attraction when people pray. So these are the two main campaigns that I'm promoting as part of Targeted UK. And on the, um, on the, learn the law of attraction campaign on the targeted UK website. I've put about seven or eight different links to personal empowerment, personal development programs, i.e. audio books that people can listen to and can use the techniques to help themselves empower themselves to become the best version of themselves, to become the most efficient activist, to learn how to create their reality, to learn how to be a conscious creator. Because most of us are creating with our thoughts and emotions without any awareness whatsoever. And if we're going in through our day having negative thoughts about, oh, this is never going to happen, you know, we're never going to manifest our freedom, our freedom's never going to happen, they're too powerful, you know, um, the weapons are too sophisticated. If everyone is going around thinking this, then all they are doing is cementing that reality and creating that reality via the law of attraction and making it even harder for us to collectively manifest our freedom. If we're feeling really negative and really in a um, in sad, anxious and, and states of negative emotion, again, that is getting in the way of us manifesting our reality. So in the community, we really need to break that cycle of seeing, you know, the, the, the results we're getting, which, you know, I know we've had better Hello. results in the last Hello. year. Um, uh, Mark, we have a question from Stephen. Go ahead, Stephen. Oh. Yeah, just a short prayer, uh, and it probably helps to focus and visualize the technology being disabled while I say this very short prayer. But here goes. Thanks, Frank. Uh, dear Creator God, Source, Oneness, Universe, thank you for disabling permanently all of the technologies that are being used to harm targeted individuals. Amen. Well, Thanks, Frank. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, sir. It's nice to hear yes, from sir. you. Um, oh, thanks. Do, do you have any questions for Mark? Or uh, well, I joined the call late, so I reckon not. Okay. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for your prayer. That, that's that's um, that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank Stephen. You. We'll be on the uh, conference okay. call uh, at uh, 9 p.m. Okay. Um, Frank, I'm just going to talk over the mic here now. Yeah, go ahead. And, and, yeah. Um, so Stephen is um, just having difficulties still. I've just asked him to try his handset, his, his telephone, instead of his laptop or computer or pad. That's, a, that's an idea, isn't it? He could try his phone. Yes, he could. He could do that and download the app if he has a smart- Would he need to? Oh, he had to download the app to do that. Okay, let me just type that over to him. Because I, I re- he's got some updates from my cater for us as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, so um, what was the message I've got to send to him again? Yeah. Yeah, download out. Hopefully he's got some space on his phone. Yes, I, I, I hope that he has a smartphone because if it's a uh, flip phone, that's not going to work. All right, hold on a second. We have another caller. Are you all ready, Mark? Yeah. Hold on one second. Yes. Okay, you're 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 uh, now ready. 
Hey, LaForest. Hi, how you doing, Craig? Hey, Craig, Good, how you Craig. doing, man? Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. How are you? And I think Sasha is there also. Hi, darling. Yeah. Was that her voice I heard? That's all right. Hi, darling. Gosh, all across the world we are today. I just wanted to call in briefly. It's uh, early morning here in Sydney, Australia, and once again commend you on the work that you're doing, Frank, for all of us who are victims. And, Mark, good on you, mate. You work so hard in the United Kingdom. I had the opportunity to meet Mark when I was on my way to Belgium about four years ago. Um, I'm a board member of Ecotour, of course, and had an opportunity while I was in London to go up to Leeds and visit Mark, and it was just a fantastic day that we had together. And his his connection with a higher power a spirit is so similar to mine. Um, how do you not wake up in the morning and look around and think, my God, this is just amazing, and what we are doing to each other through this technology is so outrageous, so ridiculous to, as you said, Frank, to hurt our own environment, our, our own people. It's disgusting with you. You see how much is going on in the world. So the best that we can do is, as Mark said, is as a group of people come together and pray and thank God for this creation. We are a man and a woman on earth. We are, we are beautiful creatures of God. And Mark, uh, Again, mate, I commend you on all the work you're doing over there. It's a hard struggle. We have to live in the moment. Don't look to the future. These idiots behind my V2K, my implants, continually say, you've got this to do, you've got that to do, you've got this. I have an incredible fundraiser today for an organization called Mercy Ships Australia, these hospital ships which go up the west coast of Africa. We've got about 30, 35 people coming over to hear some unbelievable talent and you you recognize this you you say how can you not be moved by this and enjoy what we are presented with on a day-to-day -day basis by meeting new people who are just talented and, and caring so i just wanted to call in and just thank you again thank for what you do for us and i i send love to all of you and we will fight this battle we are continuing through ikatur to get our claim together, we've got to get 25,000 signatures, and we will get those uh, to present to the court in, in Belgium. But keep up the great work, all of you. Thank you, Craig. Thank, Thank you. you, Craig. Thank you. God, God bless. bless. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate that, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye, darling. I've just got Stephen on the line. And um, I've asked him to um, type some messages. I'm going to read them out on his behalf. And uh, and then I'm going to pay attention and see what his responses are, so he can be part of the call. He thinks that there is it's been interfered with because the same thing happened when he was on uh, Mr. E Cup's call, and he's suspicious that he can't get through to us. Yes, he hasn't yes. got he hasn't got a phone. Uh, he, as you said, Frank, he hasn't got the another technological means. So I let's see, hope yeah. he writes us a question and. Um, I just wanted to support Mark and, and, and say, yeah, uh, it's so imperative to keep the vibration up. And uh, when you're taking such a beating physiologically, um, environmentally, all of the different ways that this uh, plight affects us, um, we, we all need to have good programs uh, that, we, that we cling to as, as, as a habitual thought system, you know, to enforce it and be that. And I always say to everybody, um, um, you know, one of the greatest powers that we have is to abstain from speaking negatively about other people. Uh, from a neuronal point of view, from neuroscience, if we understand something that's neurochemically, um, we are at much better advantage to genuinely show compassion to ourselves and to other people when we fall into the same patterns. But that being said, it also allows us to see um, what negative thinking does to the energetic field. If you think a negative thought, you literally contract. And it's in that state of contraction that beauty and new experiences and courage can flow through you, you know, and experiences can sort of like be loosened and not held in the body's field with the density that comes from not being able to speak your truth. So I think that I, I sometimes motivate my prayers with the energy that I have experienced, the 
the reboot, if you like, or the, the added impact of the technology. Um, and I, I expressed it out as a prayer in a transformational practice. So I purify myself, I offer up my experience for all sentient beings. And in that act of pure giving, I receive back something akin to bliss, the agony that I'm experiencing because I'm so in the truth of what this feels like. I'm able to transform it through the power of my mind into one again. It, that's, the, that's the headspace and the intention. And so when I give, um, I can actually feel the quantum vibration of one rushing into conscious being within me um and, uh, yeah and the, the, that small meditation which comes from tibetan buddhism is on our home purify uh purify mind speech body purify um, offer up and receive back that is my perfect example of flow state consciousness when i was educated by spirit as to what it meant to come into flow you know, that things that are so much bigger than us, we can give it out from ourselves in a really pure way and thus be um, transformed. So, yeah, Marky, I, I just, I, I love the, the frequency of your voice when you speak about the prayer and what you're uh, um, transmitting and sharing with everybody. It's, it's, it's great. And it, it also makes me realise that I need to come home and make sure that I do my prayers religiously every day, you know, because sometimes I get taken off from, from that, and it's the only time I feel free is when I'm praying. Thank, yeah, thank you, Sasha. I really appreciate that. And I think this is a really, really important, important point that you're raising, is that, you know, we are more than just a physical body, and we need to take care of ourselves as individuals, regardless of whether we are TI or not, but especially if we are TI, basically they are interfering with us energetically, the electromagnetic energy and the frequencies in which they're radiating at us mm. is energy and it is negatively interfering with our energy to lower our vibration, put us into states of negativity, mind control us, oppress us mm. um, and make us generally feel not nowhere near our best and so in the ti community we need to learn how to empower ourselves through energetic healing practices mm -hmm. and what you're saying there one way we can do that is via prayer because we're connecting to the creator we're collect we're connecting to universal intelligence we're connecting to the universe and that's one way that we can empower ourselves and focus our mind another way is through meditation where we connect back into god back into universal intelligence and other ways that we can do it is by healing and expanding our energy field so that we are stronger and more empowered as individuals mm -hmm. and energy healing techniques including meditation and prayer which i'm including that are things that i'm recommending that Every TI do is part of empowering yourself. And um, I'm going to be releasing a personal development program at some point. And I'm also recommending, like I said before, that people go on the Targeted UK website, which is www.targetedsurvivors.com, and look at the Learn the Law of Attraction campaign and the Prayer campaign, which is under the Prayer campaign tab on the website. There are about seven or eight links with audio books that I recommend that people focus on. My recommendation would be to maybe listen to maybe two, the first two on the list, and then maybe pick one of them and kind of master and use that audio book to focus on and to master. There are also five more, which over time you can listen to, to really kind of see this from many different angles and really learn this even more, this self-empowerment, this law of attraction. Um, but another thing we can do, I recommend focusing 100% of your focus the first time that you listen to it. But then after you've done that, 
we can save time by listening to a little bit of these programs, these audio, free audio books on YouTube, maybe just 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, as we're making our tea, making our breakfast, getting up for our day, we can have this playing on in the background so that it's programming our unconscious mind and is supporting our conscious mind and our, and ourselves to be more empowered during our day. The more that we can feed our mind with these positive lessons and these empowering tools and empowering ideas, the more that these ideas and tools will come into manifestation during the day, the more that we'll be aware of them to use during the day. So I'm really going to recommend that that would be the first step that people could take towards empowering themselves is, is go on the targetedsurvivors.com website and go to the campaigns tab, then the, then the campaign, which is called the Learn the Law of Attraction campaign, and then listen to their audio books. And I'm also going to recommend that people read the prayer campaign one, that people save the prayer to their favorites or on their desktop somewhere they can see it easily and that they commit to the times, fully decide and commit to helping out. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm asking, you know, I'm, I'm, um, if people could please do that because it's going to really help. It's really going to help change this round at the basic, most fundamental energetic level. And that's where we need the change. So if we, that what I've basically, how I've set this up is I'm on Twitter and at three times a day at 9 a.m. UK time, 3 p.m. UK time and 9 p.m. UK time, I tweet out, please pray now on this prayer that we read earlier for 20 minutes or whatever you can. You know, some people might, might only be able to manage two to three minutes or a minute or five. But as much as people can at these specific times, the idea is that we all pray on that same prayer, which I read earlier, together. And collective prayer is very powerful. When people are praying on the same prayer at the same time, that is generating a very strong message to the universe, to God, which will manifest, which will plant seeds and manifest remember we said everything is energetic so we we literally are creating our reality from holding these thoughts of freedom this prayer in our mind holding it in our emotions feeling it as being true feeling that we're already free now so what i've said i've said that i recommend that people translate the times that we're praying for their own time zone so say, for example, you know, we're praying at 9 a.m. in Britain and you're six hours, be or say 3 p.m., 3 p.m. in Britain, in UK, and you are five hours before behind in, say, the east coast of the United States, as an example, then you would pray at um, 10 a.m. So you would be praying at the same time. And I also realize that sometimes for some of the time zones, this is going to mean that some people can only pray maybe two out of the three times or even once. So basically, I've um, said, you know, that, you know, make it work for you. If it's going to be better for you to pray, you know, 9 a.m., 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. in your time zone or three times a day for 20 minutes at three times that work for you, then then do that, you know, do what works for you. The most important thing is that you're making this work for you in and around your busy schedule, because I know, you know, that TIs are busy, you know, we're all busy, we all lead busy lives. So I think that's a really, really important point. You know, originally I was saying, you know, translate the time and let's pray together. And yes, there is power in praying together collectively on the same prayer at the same time. That leaves a very powerful message. But ultimately, you know, people need to do what's going to work for them. And the important thing is that people are praying and that we're amassing the minutes. The minutes are turning into hours. The hours are turning into days worth of prayer. You know, we, didn't, we need as many minutes, as many hours and as many days worth of prayer to bring this fight back. So, you know, whether that means, you know, praying at 
collectively at the same time, say you're in the USA, whether that means praying at maybe two times that are the same as what we're praying in the UK around the world, and then maybe adjusting your third time prayer time, then do that. If that means just praying at three times that work for you, whatever times they may be, do that. The important thing is doing what works for the individual. But, And I think flexibility is a real key here. Another thing is that um, I've also requested that I know a lot of TIs. I know there's lots of TIs who unfortunately can't work because of the vicious effects of the targeting program. And what I would really, really like to encourage for these individuals is to use that time, that valuable time you've got, to really help this prayer campaign by, you know, viewing it almost as like a, a, a you know, a job. So say, for example, you would normally go um, and work like nine till five or nine till three, then thinking, right, I'm going to, I'm going to commit to praying at these times or as much as I can, you know, Monday to Friday. And I'm going to view it like with the same commitment that I would have a full-time job. And I know that not everyone is going to be able to do that. You know, some people will be too much for because of the effects of their targeting. But what I would say is that when I'm in a state of prayer and when I'm praying is that that seems to offer me a form of protection and I get more comfort and protection and connection when I'm in prayer, that it is possible to pray for these long periods of time. We need as many people, in addition to doing the 20 minutes for three times a day, we need as many people as possible praying for as many hours as they can. So whether they have a spare one or two hours in the evening or 30 minutes, then everything counts, you know. Um, if you can, If you can view it... Um, as a full-time occupation and really become and, and, and really commit to this cause and, and view it like a full-time job and pray for them hours that you would be working, which I believe is possible even for people who are going through a lot of hardship, the effect of that will be astronomical. Like the effect of people praying and spending that amount of time in prayer during the day will be astronomical. I cannot emphasize enough how much this will help. So to summarize what I've just said, you know, I'm trying to give people a structure, you know, and, and a basic goal, because I think this helps give people an idea. Yeah, okay, three times a day, 20 minutes. You know, I can do that. I can organize that into my life. But, you know, anything people can pray, you know, on top of that, or if people can pray, use their days to, to really take their prayer to the next level, you know, and become what I call next level prayers or even warrior prayers, that is going to have such a tremendous effect to move this movement forward. It cannot be understated. So we need people to participate as much as they can and whenever they can and take as many opportunities to pray as they can. Somebody said there was a, a nice lady I've met called Jax, and she coined something called praying on your feet. Or, you know, and, and this goes to say that even when you're out during the day, that, that you can still hold that prayer in your mind, still feel yourself as being free, think about yourself as being free. And all of this will help. All of this is taking responsibility personally for us manifesting our reality. Yeah. Is anybody still there? Yes. No, we're, we're, no, no we're, we're, we're here. Uh, everything that you've shared is so um, uh, rousing and absolutely galvanising and fantastic. In this moment, I would very much like to bring Stephen in because he's been waiting patiently and has some information to share with us all. Are you happy for me to share that now? It's just a few updates from my cater that have come through from Alison. And... Um, um, let me just see now, now, now. Yeah, so the first thing that Mark has, um, uh, Stephen rather, has written to me is that the IK to Lawyers Q&A is online. So all of us can see and hear our, um, the lawyer um, at the IK to website. The IK to pre-trial hearing will be filmed for Belgian Parliament TV, which will generate a lot of publicity. Um, also, 
which is great news. I wish I was in England for this. Amazon said there's an IKEA to Scanny event in June, which actually may be in Belgium. Um, I, I hope that they were going to get the funding together to start that in England because I know there's just loads of people. And Sorry, was, um, Sasha, an IKEA to what event? Stand event, did you say? Sorry, I didn't, I missed Scanning. What you said. Oh, scan. scanning. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. In, in when, sorry, in, in June. June. Yeah. Um, and she's um, trying to hire a Faraday cage for ICATA, uh, the UK um, ICATA, because they're going to start doing the scans there. Um, yeah, which is amazing. Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, it seems that Stephen's computer has been hacked in some kind of a way because this happened to him. Uh, recently when he was trying to join Mr. E. Cup's call um, and he wanted to talk about the Derbyshire police because he's uncovered a whole bunch of scumbags working under the veil of being policemen. Um, yeah, OK, so I'm going to go over to you, Frank, now because I want to hear uh, your thoughts. Frank? I just, I just wanted to relate to the people the fact that we are providing a page for impact statements on our website. And the page has just been completed. Sasha is the first person on there. And Linda from the U.S. is the second person on there. And we've just received an email uh, from a third person. So you'll see impact statements the people will give their names and ways to get in touch with them so that if you are seeing the same type of targeting, which everybody does, uh, get to them. Call them up. You know, it, I know it's, it's, it's very expensive to call to the UK and from the UK, but if there's somebody in the U.S., And I wanted to comment on the psychology, actually, um, the subconscious. If every time you run into a situation, uh, you are embraced with fear and you feel down, you feel out, you feel like that goes down to your subconscious. And every time, unless you change it, that feeling, all the feelings will come rushing back if you start sending positive information. In other words, be happy, you know? And if you, that'll go down to your subconscious. And what happens yeah. is you've eliminated that phobia. Well, targeting isn't a phobia, but your subconscious can help you out a lot. But that's just to uh, comment on on, uh, what Mark had brought up about that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Sasha, do you have anything to add about that? Um, No, I was going to pause. By all means, chip in there, Mark. Come on. Yeah, and that's a um, really, really important point, Frank, I think that you've just said, is that, you know, everything we ever thought or felt, you know, or experienced is stored in our unconscious. And, you know, this is why the need for healing, you know, energy healing is so great, because this releases all of this trauma from the body, from the energy field. And then we can think clearer, you know, we're emotionally, you know, um, more stable and, and are able to think you know, think and feel more positively. And this is all going to help us manifest our freedom. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing, for example, you know, what I was talking about earlier, saying that whether you are, you know, um, into psychology and you call it programming the unconscious to help you with your life, or whether you call it the law of attraction, you know, or saying lots of affirmations in personal development, they may say, you know, talk about it as affirmations or positive thinking. 
you know, it's all helping to program your reality and, and manifest your reality. And, um, you know, positive emotions and positive thoughts can be programmed just as easily as negative. And if we hold, whatever we hold in our unconscious mind, so if we in the community are collectively or individually holding the belief that this is not possible, I think like I was saying earlier, it's that cycle we have to break. And the cycle goes like this. We see ourselves not getting the results we want. Then we react to that and we have negative thoughts saying, this is never going to happen. I'm never going to achieve my freedom. We're never going to achieve our freedom. You know, why does nothing ever happen? Why does no one listen to us? And then we feel really um, bad emotionally, really negative. And then that feeds back into more negative thinking, which feeds back into more negative emotions. And then maybe we look at the environment, we look at a new situation about how something hasn't gone how we want it. And that again feeds back into that mental, emotional cycle and on it goes. We need to break that pattern by instead of focusing on the situation and how, well, it is getting better, but on how bad it is and how no one's helped us, we need to focus on what we want. We need to focus on our freedom and break that pattern. And any time we get that negative thought of this is never going to happen, this negative belief, we need to immediately become aware and we need to increase the speed at which we do become aware to think, ah, negative thought, negative emotion, that's a signal and a message that I need to change my thoughts and change my emotions right now. The way we change our emotions, there's many ways we can do that. But when we change our thoughts, that's going to be the easiest and the quickest way to change our emotions. We can also stop that mental emotional cycle by just observing our thoughts and our emotions and not allowing, firstly, stopping that cycle happening, but just observing our thoughts and emotions and not allowing any negative thoughts that we do have be fed into that negative emotion and create a negative emotion, not allowing any negative emotion to rise up and create more negative thoughts by simply observing that and using mindfulness on that and remaining neutral to that. We take away a lot of that power of that negativity, which is constantly programming our unconscious mind. So as TIs, we need to reprogram ourselves. We need to reprogram our unconscious mind. And when we program, reprogram positively with freedom, and with positive emotions and feeling good, when we reprogram our unconscious mind, which is really the, um, the deeper part of our mind that we're not aware of consciously, when we reprogram that, then the unconscious mind will support our conscious everyday waking mind in manifesting that freedom. It will support us in taking actions to manifest our freedom, to achieve the results that we're trying to achieve with our activism. So it's all about changing our core um, our core um, beliefs um, and emotions at the unconscious level by constantly reprogramming our thoughts and emotions constantly. And we need to do that over and over again with repetition. And when we do that enough, eventually our unconscious mind that's working on that deeper level will support us consciously, will support the conscious mind in order to manifest our freedom, in order to attract our reality. So that's what I'd really like to say. So, you know, we need to clear out our conscious mind through healing techniques, and we also need to reprogram it. There's two things. Do you, Clearing Anna, out, I've got a question for you. Do you work with movement as well to release the somatic tension of what's experienced with your clients? Or, or do you support that in, for people to heal really in, in, a, in, a, in a totalitarian way, everything that you're saying is of the greatest import. I concur. I was just wondering if you've got the somatic element in there as well. I'm um, encouraging um, my clients to do yoga. Yeah. I also teach my clients lots of quick, um, should I call it quick, easy to use energy healing techniques that they can use very quickly and rapidly to change their state, to change mm -hmm. their emotions, mm -hmm. and to help them heal. 
Um, and what I, rec what I recommend, I recommend yoga as being a very powerful way that TIs can really shift a lot of that energy out of their body. You know, that kind of dull fatigue and energy that the radiation is causing, mm -hmm. you know, and this also heals the energy body and helps an individual to be more focused, more energized, um, more, um, how can we put it, um, more in tune with themselves. It's, it's, it's alchemy, isn't it, really? Um, taking taking yourself by the reins and becoming the master. This is the invitation that this ship can give you, is that to actually wake up from the matrix completely because your very survival or your sanity depends upon it. You know, most people um, are whimsical about their spiritual development because, um, I mean, you know, sometimes we learn... Uh, different modalities of healing and we don't give it 100% to switch the whole chemistry of our brain because when you change the thoughts, you change the brain chemistry, you therefore change the physiology of the body and the energetic field and how the body looks and how you look. Um, but it takes that dedication that you um, are um, elucidating today, you know, and I, I, I think... That's a really, really important message. And that's how we can use this situation, which is so dire, as a mm. gasoline to change and get free of the mortal coil. And I think also for all of us to see that we, we, we love being alive. If we can still cherish the fact that we're divine beings given the gift to express spirit through flesh, through matter, that we can dance and sing and be free, even though we're feeling under observation. That's the ultimate act of rebellion in conjunction with being the living embodiment of uh, loving kindness and, it, it, you know, being respectful towards each other, um, not speaking badly of each other, um, looking for beauty in others as opposed to um, all, all of these practices, I believe. Um, support a, a, a mind which is like a beautiful garden neuronally uh, and neurochemically and electromagnetically and I think that is uh, also in conjunction with all of the work that you speak about I think they all just it's all intertwined and it's what can lead us to um, enlightenment in the human form this lifetime and um, allow us to have union with a uh, great spirit that we can't deny and so that we don't feel you take one step towards great spirit um, with mindfulness and choosing your thoughts and um, disciplining your mind and your mouth so you don't talk shit about each other and people and think kindly towards yourself and big situations in your life with compassion, understanding, you know, people act against us sometimes with limited information or difficulty in acclimating to the world they found themselves living in and became bullies as a way to survive. Mm. And it's that invitation from hardship that everybody has to develop a new way of thinking, a new way of perceiving, a new way of uh, being. And uh, that is your ticket back home to divinity and free from this earth. Because let's face it, we'd want to be reborn down here, would you? Mark, ascension, this is what it brings me to in a long-winded way. Ascension, the ascension process has always been so important to me. You know what you just said, like, that is so spot on. Like, I agree with everything you just said. Um, I'm just saying to Frank now that I'm happy to go for two hours if you're happy to do that, Sasha. Yeah, I don't even know how long we've been on here now. We're, about an hour and twenty. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it myself. <laughs> I, just wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, let's go for two. So, um, yeah, no. Basically, you know, if we're looking at the very wider context of this, we ask ourselves, why is all of this happening? Mm -hmm. Like, what is really going on at, at the very highest level, and why is this mind control agenda? and this depopulation agenda being done onto planet Earth. And the reason is, one word, it's ascension. The powers that be and the forces behind that, I'll call them spiritual forces, let's leave it at that, 
They do not want humanity ascending because we are in the end times, you know, and again, this is not a religious thing. There's many clues and signs that we are in a, a very special spiritual time where we have the ability, where the whole of the, the, the world is going through a mass awakening and we have the ability to grow spiritually and ascend like in no other time due to the, 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 the way the energies are coming into this planet and the way, you know, um, certain things are um, finalizing in this time. So it's so, so important. Like, I mean, the one thing that's got me through this the most is, is coming into spirituality and learning about spirituality and I would include mindfulness as a part of that, as a, as a heavy part of that. But also, as you say, living in the heart. And for me, the very basics come down to mindfulness, you know, trying to be as compassionate as possible. You know, I know it's difficult sometimes when you're under pressure and you're under stress. It's very easy to react. But if we can just try to, to you know, be the, as, as compassionate as we can and as an understanding as we can, then that's going to go a long way to us building the kind of relationships that we want that's going to help us work together as a team to get through this um and for me a communion with with god with the universe is also very important that's giving me a lot of strength believing in something bigger than us a higher power i've often noticed in people that don't believe in something bigger than themselves that, that they're, they're not very happy yeah. and You'll see it. You'll see this a lot in people that don't believe in anything like that. You know, in any kind of higher power or anything. You know, it's it can be a very lonely place because all you've got is your own thoughts and emotions to deal with, and, and that can feel like a very a very challenging place. But when you believe in something bigger than yourself, and you can feel that, and you can experience that, and you connect to that, it can give you a source of refuge and power and intuition and beauty, a, a glimpse into beauty that is is not possible when you when we're still um seeing everything as like you know here i am here and here's this table that's in front of me that is completely separate to me you know and and these people that are completely separate to me it's a very it can become a very isolated thing and um i found that to be one of the things that really helped me the most to deal with a lot of the um, symptoms of my targeting and, and, and get some kind of meaning, get some kind of meaning out of my life. Um, Absolutely. So I think it's very important. Yeah. I, I've just actually picked up again, uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. Can I share something with you? Yeah, the, the, go ahead. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's pertinent to what we speak of, brother. A thought transfixed me for the first time in my life. I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many poets, proclaimed as the final wisdom by so many thinkers. The truth that love is the ultimate and the highest goal to which man can uh, aspire. Then I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human poetry and human thought and belief have to impart upon us. The salvation of man is through love and in love I understand how a man who has nothing left in this world will stay and uh, may still know bliss. It is only for a brief moment in the contemplation of this beauty and truth that even in a position of utter dissolution, a man cannot express himself in a positive action. He can remember the truth of beauty and meaning. Mm. That's really, really beautiful. That that's really nice. Uh, it's like <laughs> it's really difficult sometimes. You know, when you're you're feeling stressed and like, I know this consciously. I know that like you know that living in the heart is the most important thing that can help balance me and keep me strong and empowered during the day and help me <laughs> not become reactive to the world around me. Yeah. And yet it's easy to forget that and to not use that. And I find that every time that I I come out of the heart and I stop remembering the power of that, that that's when I start to suffer, you know. Um, yeah. So 
yeah. it's really important to, for people to realize that you know the heart is the access to our spiritual self to our soul to understanding that dimension of you know universal intelligence all that is a higher power god whatever you want to call it that is the main access point into that dimension which brings us peace and strength yeah. and beauty and intuition yeah. in which can, we can have knowledge. Sorry, I, I just wanted to add for sometimes, um, well, in my, my development years ago, um, my teacher said to me, um, I was trying to use a pendulum and, and she said, uh, so um, use your heart. And I thought, how do I use my heart to control the pendulum? Because what I had to do was um, imagine my consciousness inside my heart. And so I, from my heart itself. And what that taught me was that I could take refuge in my heart. So when I'm having a hard time, I journey into the center of my heart and hold my consciousness being in there. And from that place, I contemplate the situation and what's going on. And it allows me to switch my thinking so that from that heart centered place, I'm able to access maybe compassion, look at the whole picture of what's going on for the person so that I actually get free from thinking in this way. My mm. blood pressure goes down. My um, respiratory system is, is um, um, more um, wave-like and relaxed. I'm bringing down everything. And so all of my systems are in smooth waveforms as opposed to jagged and upset. And it's, it's this, we are allowed to get angry. It's completely natural. If you castigate yourself for having a response to the outside world, if it's too much, of course, you know you need to train yourself to stay more measured. But to get pissed off is okay as long as we have the ability to go, okay, I'm going to regroup into my heart now. And in that, it's the correlation and understanding between physiological and mental patterns. The mental patterns elucidate and, 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 and create a physiological response which is against us. And so um, once we get that um, understanding, um, we can become the master and be more inspired to self-mastery by thinking, okay, my, my whole energetic field is jagged right now, my heart rate's up, um, I've got the power through breathing, focus, attention, coming back into the heart, being more philosophical, I can get myself through this, you know? And, and I think, for, I don't know about you, I'm sure, though, for me, I secreted, I managed to deal with a situation with mobbers, and then when I get myself away from them, uh, then I'm, I'm beset by the effects of high doses of cortisol, you know, in my body, kind of like trembling, shaking, in conjunction with uh, re-radiation, you know, like that's a heavy mix. And it's only through the application of these tools, as you speak out, Mark, either, um, help me to regain my composure. When there's nowhere to fall down, you know, like some of us mobbers, um, 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 TIs, we, we're on our own. We don't have anyone to pick us up if we were to have a physiological response to fear. We have to master self-mastery and conducting uh, one's thinking, um, you know, we have to have these tools. We need to have them if we're going to get absolutely, through. Absolutely, yeah, ab absolutely. I totally, 100% agree. Self-mastery and self-empowerment are the key. Yeah. Are the key. And, 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 and one of the biggest parts of that is manifestation. But also, like you said, we need to take care of ourselves from an even more fundamental level, which is the level of spiritual growth and yeah. and energetic healing principles that are going to really you know put us in that foundational place that foundational place of strength and peace where everything else just works better in our life you know and i think you know it's really important what you said you know that the, there's no judgment in any thoughts or emotions and it's we're not trying to stop any thoughts or emotions but what we do is we observe them like clouds, like passing clouds. And then the simple act of observation and observing these thoughts and emotions and kind of just allowing them to dance there a little bit, you know, allowing them to play. The simple act of observing them neutrally and allowing them will naturally dissipate them and they'll, they'll just go away. 
because they no longer have any power over you anymore. You're not reacting to them. And I think that kind of distinction and that almost seeming paradox is really key that, um, you know, on one level, you know, you know, when we're not viewing them as bad and we're not trying to get rid of them, but on, on another level, when we do just observe and we remain neutral to them and view them in this way, then they naturally dissipate anyway. So, um, and we need to train our mind to do this, you know, and, 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 and we need to hold that intention that when, and keep holding that intention that when negative thoughts and emotions come our way, that I will become aware of it as quickly as possible. And Mark. I will become quicker and quicker over time at identifying when I'm getting negative thoughts and negative emotions so that I can nip it in the bud. I can stop this negative mental emotional cycle that we talked about earlier and I can cut it at the very base. I can cut it from the roots to stop it from spiraling. Mm -hmm. And the way that we do that is simply by observing it. Imagine that you are the sky. You know, you are all that is. You are this wonderful spiritual being. You are, you are eternal. You're an eternal spiritual being. But even just imagining, you know, that you're a source of awareness, which you are. You're, everyone is awareness. That's who we are on the deepest level. If we can observe from this point of awareness, everything as being a passing cloud, every thought has been a passing cloud, every emotion has been a passing cloud, we can quickly come into a state of strength through that neutrality, through that unreactiveness to what is around us. And when we can achieve that neutrality, then we can live more effectively and in a more stable way from the heart because we can bring the heart energy from that stable place, from that neutral place, from that unreactive place mm -hmm. into existence with much more stability, continuity and power. So, you know, there are two kind of keys here, you know, on one level we're working on the mind, you know, in terms of that we're, we're observing the thoughts and we're, we're not letting our thoughts race away with us. We're nipping it in the bud before they get out of control. Another level, we're working on the heart and we're just, you know, um, holding that intention, remembering to be compassionate and, and as understanding as we can with people around us. But when we work on the mind through ob observing, then all of a sudden we will naturally become more into the heart as well. Because when the mind quietens, we naturally come into our natural state of being. And then we, therefore, we naturally start to live from the heart more. It's also the same in reverse. But when Sorry. we live in the heart, the mind starts to quieten too. Absolutely. Mark, um, it's such a beautiful uh, wisdom. I, I'd like to open up the, uh, the chat uh, or the, the time that we're sharing together so beautifully to, over to Frank because... Uh, Frank, can you come over to me? Speak to me. Okay. I just wanted to go over, just not to change the subject, but we have had for probably over a year now, probably closer to a year and a half, uh, a group called TI Parents, Helping Parents, because we got a lot of emails at the time that, there were people that were actually in trouble. Now, if you go into your family and you tell them point blank what is happening to you, you have family disintegration, disassociation. Uh, they will turn their back and shun you almost. And the reasoning is they can't really see anything wrong but they can see that you've changed. There's something different about you. They don't know that you're fighting a war. One or more perps are speaking to you and getting your attention or trying to. But that never took off. But I would like to say, do not tell your family because it will inevitably destroy it. When we have more information, then tell your parents. 
that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, evidence. That's what we all need. We need to bring it back to tangible evidence because it's such a huge subject matter. It's normal for us. And the greatest thing about our coalition right now, I'd say, is because it all... Um, self-educated people that have looked and embodied a spiritual practices and ways of being as a decent human being and realised how strong that makes us. But also we've looked into recent history and we've um, studied um, all of the different programmes that there's, that there's no hiding from. We've looked at recent history and so therefore we're less propelled uh, to keep repeating those patterns as other people at this moment in time, which we have compassion for because they're in the matrix and they're bombarded by information and outward looking. You know, I think all of this uh, mindfulness is the ability to go within oneself and check and see what has depth and meaning and which is um, frivolous and a distraction. Um, This moment in time, you know, is really our moment to to wake up. And um, I... I really hope that people start to uh, do their own research and and look at the validity of what this community um, and the people that have come out, the brave souls that have come out from the NSA, for example, and many other institutions to try and help people at this moment in time to take responsibility, to be um, as active as they can um, in showing compassion and raise awareness about these programs from a very centered point of view you know and, and not get up on a soapbox but um, be factual and measured and hopefully collect their evidence every day everything that you go through put it in a, a, a diary as bullet points take any photograph that you can with a ruler so that you can see the injury and measure it you can use a note of any note that's in your country or anything is a reference. Start making uh, recordings. Get yourself a uh, cheap Olympus handheld digital um, um, uh, recorder, for example, with a, with a big capacity HD card. And that in itself can pick up um, sub um, uh, uh, signals within the fabric of the space and environment that you find yourself in and you may just find that you are able to prove by um, having sound forensics done what is actually happening to you and more information about your purpose there is technology that's coming out um that amy holm has been working on in october hopefully um would be a handheld device and so when we're being attacked or people are being attacked with a voice to skull technology they can make a recording and it can actually be um, found within the structure of the file with the technology that she utilises. So there's hope for everybody, but we need to keep evidence. We need to be factual. We need to be measured. The more that you understand, the more lucidly you can speak, the more calmly you can be. Do not try to convince anybody about um, what's happening to you. You need to be very, very measured. One of the ways that psychiatrists um, and psychologists and doctors will um, uh, demean you and close you down is if you speak under pressure, pressure of speech, we call it, which is speaking too fast. Um, And that comes as a consequence of the trauma that you're living through. Uh, It's just a reminder that I say, it. you know, we have to slow everything right down and collect evidence and speak to people that are safe and, yeah, keep up the good fight and keep developing and use the difficulty as Mark so beautifully um, shares, you know, and as, as, as Frank and everybody else, you know, that we can become far more mindful, far more philosophical and the truest expression of our spiritual selves, even though we're tortured. If we find a way to balance ourselves out energetically, um, we can talk to people. Sometimes I know this experience makes you feel raw and jagged and it's hard to look at people and you're scared you're going to take another, you don't know if you're going to be humiliated, you don't know when the next hit is coming. It's a lot to do. But uh, there is hope. Keep evidence, develop and grow and um, 
get support from uh, targeted Massachusetts or, or, or a targeted UK anywhere that you are in the world. Seek out good people that run these groups and you'll make it through. Certainly help me. Yeah, I just want to just um, just elaborate on what you're saying is that um, if we are trying to convince people of what we're saying, the truth of what we're saying, we need to speak very slowly, very mindfully, with a very with rationality, with a very rational tone, and mm-hmm. with confidence in what we're saying. It's like we know what we're saying is true. Um, there's no doubt about it, you know. We're an expert on the matter. So that we come across as very professional, very credible. We need to know our facts like inside out. We need to know about the whistleblowers who support what we're saying, all the patents, including specific details, you know, leaked documents, um, declassified documents. We need to know the facts and we need to be able to generate facts at a moment's notice. And we also need to introduce topics to people in a very progressional way. So we wouldn't start by saying, oh, everyone's being zapped into their brains around the world, you know, with with um, frequencies, you know, by perps. You know, you wouldn't start with something as, as far, you know, I'm not saying it's not far out, obviously, because it's true, but you wouldn't start, you wouldn't start with something as um, full on and something that's going to kind of generate that anxiety and fear in people. You would start more gently and you would ease it in and you would maybe start by giving a bit of a history to it and saying, well, these abuses have a, have a very um, long history. You know, they're rooted in something called MK Ultra, which is, um, you know, it's all over Wikipedia, you know, that is well acknowledged in Wikipedia and all mainstream websites. And, um, you know, we know from the past that governments have um, committed many atrocities and testing on their subjects. We know this from, you know, the times where they used Agent Orange on civilians. And you start quoting examples and then you start leading in to what you're trying to say because that kind of sets the scene as in like people start going, yes, yes, yes. It ticks all the boxes and they think, yes, you know, they're right. These things are widely acknowledged and we know that governments don't have a rosy past. They're not, they're, they haven't done well, you know, in not harming civilians. And so then you're working from the platform in which they're going to start to believe what you're going to say. If you just start blurting it out straight away in a way that's not gently done and is is going to spike their anxiety and get them in that resistant state, it's all about doing it consciously, being mindful of how resistant they are to your message and kind of, you know, taking a a small step forward, then taking a couple steps back if need be, easing off a little bit maybe gentling your message a little bit, then kind of maybe taking another step forward. And we have to be very receptive to how people's doing. And if we feel as though, if we know that we're getting to that point where they're just so resistant, then maybe just drop it, maybe like pick it up three days later and just maybe mention one thing. And that's the way that we work it by time, by by, um, um, going off the pace, which, you know, most people can, uh, you know, are ready for. And, And that's a case by case basis. Every individual is different. So I think that's very important um, to know your facts inside out and work in this way. Um, Mark, I'm going to interrupt you there at that beautiful junction because we have we've moved into the last 15 minutes and Frank and I would very much like to hear you um, repeat your prayer one more time. Um, okay. your, your, your closing mission statement basically is, is what Francis has just shared with me. Yes. Okay. That would be great. And um, your prophecy. Yes. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, I, I I will do. I'd just like to just say as well that I would really appreciate if people can follow me on Twitter because that's where I kind of conduct the prayer campaign and the other prayer campaigns that I'm running on Targeted UK. I also have a YouTube um, channel and a Facebook group, and it would be great if I could share these with you and you could perhaps potentially share these on your website. Um, And I'd just like to encourage people to read the campaigns on the targetedsurvivors.com website, because even though many of them have been written for a UK audience, I'm actually going to be promoting them globally for all TIs to get to participate in with. 
And just to give you a very quick 30 second summary, one of them, for example, is visiting your local MP or your local politician in your area and telling them about targeting. Another one is writing in email into your main parliamentary um, body. So in the, in the UK, it's the Houses of the Parliament. It's 10 Downing Street. In America, it would be the White House. Um, this is another one of my campaigns. So um, I would really appreciate if people could go on there and check them out because they're global campaigns. With that said, I'd just like to say um, the main message from today is that if people, you know, really, um, the, the main message that I would like to really just summarize is that we need empowerment in the target individual community and we need people to step up as leaders. We need empowered leaders in the target individual community. And I would recommend going to that Learn the Law of Attraction campaign on the Targeted UK website and listening to the audiobooks on there and committing to self-empowerment, committing to improving ourselves individually. And that will make the world of difference. So with that said, um, thank you, Frank. And I'd just like to start the prayer now. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Please do. So if people could just, um, again, hold this as if it's already been achieved. So that feeling that you would have if this had already been achieved, that's the feeling that we're really aiming to achieve when we're reading this prayer, as if it's already been done, because that's the quickest way to manifest. So I'll begin. All targeted individuals have been recognized globally and freed from the crimes against humanity which affected them. This happened from the top down globally in the quickest, most efficient way for all affected. Targeted individuals globally are now all freed from directed end weapon assaults, electronic torture, mind control technology assaults, chemical, biological assaults, and multi-person stalking. All forms of mind control and, quant and frequency quantum or AI weapon assaults on planet Earth, whether mass or individual, have been completely stopped, regardless of the source of them. We live in a world free from mind control, Target individuals have been helped by the UN, governments globally, and military and intelligence agencies globally as part of a takedown operation of these crimes. And they continue to offer their assistance ongoing in the most helpful and effective ways. The global press played a huge role in exposing targeted individuals' crimes ultimately. They reveal to the public that this is happening globally to civilians and not just US diplomats. As part of the global takedown, targeted individuals were, and still are, helped by human rights groups, the police, the Council of Europe, the EU, UK Parliament and parliaments globally, the US senators, the US Senate Intelligence Committee, the White House, and many other groups globally who all got on board to help. The ICATOR lawsuit and the international email campaign were also incredibly successful and influential in the best way in helping to stop these crimes. This means this problem has now been eliminated completely. Target individuals globally and now protected and healed through official testing programs, radiation measurement centers, tracking centers, jamming equipment, shielding rooms, radiation police, and a whole host of other one-to-one -one therapies and other protective or healing measures. Targeted individuals are now treated with compassion and understanding by people globally 
and measures and safeguards have been put in place to ensure that civilians globally will always remain free from these remote threats. This includes appropriate safeguards on artificial intelligence, both generally and for the use of this technology. The technology is now publicly illegal globally, as worldwide legislation has now come into place by governments globally as the norm. Targeted individuals are now so happy, loving, joyful, peaceful, safe, secure, connected, successful, and much, much more. They have wonderful relationships with friends and family and wonderful free lives. They have also been helped in a realistic way to receive compensation for the psychological damage, trauma, and physical damages that they received during their targeting. The appropriate justice has now happened with regards to those who committed these crimes globally, who have received the appropriate justice from legal systems globally. They have been used as a severe example to ensure that we always remain free from these crimes. We as humanity are now in a much better place. Now all targeted individuals have been freed globally. Justice has been served. Peace reigns in the world. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, universe. And so it is. Many thousands joined the prayer campaign and prayed three times daily for 20 minutes at the set times to finally end these crimes globally. Many thousands of people globally also prayed on this prayer for very long periods, as much as they could and whenever they could, i.e. one, two, three hours, etc. Many thousands even prayed continuously for many full days, weeks and months and until freedom was achieved. We achieved 20,000 people praying daily on this prayer in an incredibly quick amount of time after it went viral in the truth community, the media and the general public. Many thousands joined the prayer campaign and prayed three times daily for 20 minutes at the set times to finally end these crimes globally. Many thousands of people globally also prayed on this prayer for very long periods of time, as much as they could and whenever they could, i.e. one, two, three hours, etc. Many thousands even prayed continuously for many full days, weeks, months, and until freedom was achieved. We achieved 20,000 people praying daily on this prayer in an incredibly quick amount of time after it went viral in the truth community, the media, and the general public. Many thousands joined the prayer campaign and prayed three times daily for 20 minutes at the set times to finally end these crimes globally. Many thousands of people globally also prayed on this prayer for very long periods of time, as much as they could and whenever they could, i.e. one, two, three hours. Many thousands even prayed continuously for many full days, weeks, months, and until freedom was achieved. We achieved 20,000 people praying daily on this prayer in an incredibly quick amount of time after it went viral in the truth community, the media, and the general public. This prayer has now manifested in the way described above or a way that is even better and faster, and so it is. This prayer has now manifested in the way described above or a way that is even better and faster, and so it is. This prayer has now manifested in the way described above or a way that is even better and faster, and so it is. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. End of prayer. Thank you very much, Mark. That is one of the best pieces of literature, I think, that has come to the community for quite some time. And it Thank will, you, Frank. It will be appreciated. <clears throat> and uh, for closing statements, we'll see if we can get Stephen to uh, give us one um, by way of typing it in. But before that, let me see. Okay, Sasha, you want to give your closing statement? <laughs> okay, Mark, do you want to give your closing statement? I have my mic yeah. on. Sorry, Sasha. Yeah, excuse oh, me. Sasha, my, 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 my mic wasn't on. I, Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure to share this time with you. Um, and, and with all of us collectively, and I'm in, in spite of the challenges that we're going through, I think it's a fantastic message that we share tonight collectively about the power of mind, power of transformation, self mastery, being the best example of the human that you want to be, um, and developing abilities to contemplate and, and demonstrate more compassion. And um, so everything that you represent, I, I hold in great esteem and every single person here and all of the TIs that come to our, um, our conference calls, you know, exemplify the same qualities. Um, yeah, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Frank, for, for being the facilitator of this and bringing me into the company of these great people doing such great work. Thank you, Sasha. Mm -hmm. Stephen. Thank you. Thank has, you, Sasha. Thank, thank you. Stephen mm -hmm. has thanked us uh, for the show. And God bless you, Stephen. And next time you come on here, which will be very soon, along with Mark, I promise you that, uh, you'll have your mic fixed. And I would like to say... We're just a little bit early. Um, I think that we should, at this time, close because we're going to run over and it's going to uh, botch something, I'm sure. But my name is Frank Allen. Good night from Boston, Massachusetts. Swear allegiance to the flag Whatever flag they offer Never hint at what you really feel Teach the children quietly For someday, someday